No, this isn't clickbait. No, this isn't me speaking in hyperbole. It's about to be over in two weeks. Here's why. Okay, the market as I see it is about to drastically change course. There's about three major markers coming up, each of which will negatively contribute towards the health of our market. Now, if you've been watching me for the past few months, you know that I've been really scrutinizing our inventory levels. See, inventory is our barometer to measure which direction the market is moving. Well, if a picture is worth a thousand words, eh, you can thank me for the five minutes I'm about to save you right now. Here, you can see our inventory levels over the past 10 weeks. In just over two months, we've almost tripled our inventory. More concerning than the increase is the rate of weekly increases. We went from 100 more a week, eh, to 200, eh, to 300, then to 400. Think about it. At this rate, we'll be adding about 2,000 homes a month. By Halloween, you won't even be able to give homes away. So what happens in two weeks? Well, in about a week, the Las Vegas Association of Realtors will release the numbers for June. Shortly thereafter, the media will start announcing those numbers and put their own spin on them. While it's completely possible that we could see prices increase for the very last time this month, it's utterly impossible and frankly irresponsible for the media not to illustrate the concerning rate of inventory increases. So in two weeks, what you and I already know to be true will now be broadly known, understood, and more importantly, accepted. Once this happens, everything changes. In one month, both buyers and sellers will have drastically adjusted to this new market. Sellers who wanted to sell may just pull their homes off the market when they realize that they're never gonna get what they expected or wanted. Now for the sellers out there that have to sell, wishful thinking will now be impossible. You're going to see heinous price reductions by sellers that are scared to get caught holding the hot potato. Unfortunately, on the buying side, you're going to see buyers backing out of new and resale home contracts. I mean, better to lose $5,000 of earnest money and a high interest rate versus losing, say, 50,000 or more on the home itself. Already, new home builders are advertising standing inventory and offering incentives. So some buyers will back out. Some will expect to pay 10% you know, below market value to insulate themselves from the downturn. Meanwhile, many buyers will simply wait a year. Now this is where the pain really sets in. Now, in my next video, I'm going to explain these stages in more detail to provide a better roadmap. But the final marker is around mid-January of next year. It's human nature to hold on to material possessions until they end up owning you. Very few people truly don't care about material items. And these people are seldom in debt or indulge in overpriced luxury items and purchase overpriced homes. That just leaves the rest of us. Just because you can see the writing on the wall doesn't mean you're ready to accept it. Right now, we're in the denial phase. You know, there's no way my business will go down and no way I'm gonna lose my house. Then comes anger when you see prices go down and businesses start to struggle. Then comes bargaining, you know, maybe if I do this or I do that, I can, I can figure this all out. Then as the holidays come, that's when the depression kicks in, when reality strikes. Finally, in January comes the acceptance phase, where people realize it's time to cash out and humble their standard of living. The problem with this timeline is that by next year, who knows how bad the market may become. I still don't see a crash like 2008, but once prices slide, it's a very slippery slope, yeah, pun intended. Sometimes it's difficult to see the bottom with just a flashlight. I think where the real pain will be is on the high end. We've built tons of homes around a million dollars. The problem is that when you're going broke, so is everyone else. And during a recession, luxury items become relatively worthless. Few people prosper in a recession. Very few are looking to purchase luxury homes. For the few that are, they have actual 
wealth behind them. And they expect a deal since they know they have no competition. So when you have a product that nobody wants, the market value tends to plummet. All these crypto kids and wannabe day traders made cash and some of them got rich, but few had actual wealth beyond what their portfolio said. Ego will keep them in the game too long. That same hubris will ultimately be their demise when they exhaust their savings and are forced to sell. As a final thought, let me say this. In no way do I expect a repeat of last time. In fact, even though many people will wind up selling 10 to even 30% lower than market values right now, most of these owners made substantially more than that in equity. So while they won't like the final sales price, they'll be okay. For those that refinance their equity away and wind up selling for no profit, well, as they say, those who do not learn history are doomed to repeat it. The dot-com bubble from 2000 and the housing bubble of 2008, those are the equivalent of Biff's sports almanac. All you had to do was pay attention and stay humble. Well, that's it for this video. Please click and subscribe since I've got a more expansive video coming out soon that delves into how and why I'm so bearish on housing over this next year. For those of us that are self-employed and own businesses, you're really gonna wanna check this one out. Leave comments below and let me know what you'd like me to discuss in an upcoming video. See you guys all in the next one.